Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample number 24. This one's a thin panel foam core and spread toe carbon skins. The goal here is to talk about what spread toe is and how it looks and works and also to discuss how important it is to poke holes in your foam core to let air out of the bottom side. Here's a look at the spread toe carbon we're going to use. This is a toe, a 12K carbon toe. And spread toe has flat toes woven together as opposed to oval unspread toes. They spread them out so it's very thin. There's less crimp. And the, you can see it's almost it's like tapes of carbon woven over each other. And here's a look at laminate sample 18 which uses the same core but with e-glass skins. And in this one you can see there are holes punched in the core every 50 millimeters or so. And this is really important because this lets air from the bottom skin come out because this is closed cell foam and air doesn't go through. So the foam we're going to do here doesn't have any holes in it. I didn't punch any holes. And it's a shame to do this with that nice spread toe but we should still get a reasonable idea of how it works but kill two birds with one stone here and give me an example of how not to use core in a wet layup process so here's the spread toe going down this is a hundred and eighty five gram roughly six ounce carbon and this is a Hexel product. A couple of other companies make spread toe. It's generally a little more expensive, but it's thinner and has better mechanical properties because there's less crimp as the fibers go up and over each other. Um, they do so less often because the tapes are wider and they because the tapes are thinner, they don't have to go up and over each other quite so much. So here goes the core with no holes in it, and all that resin at the bottom isn't going to have anywhere to go. And I wasn't sure how bad this would be. I had a pretty good idea there would be air in it, but that's part of what we're showing here. And so wetting out the core on the bottom so there's resin on it, ideally that would be with some filled resin for something with heavier skins or thicker core, but here it will be fine just using straight resin like this. And now I'm wetting out the top and putting down this top skin. This is really nice stuff and it wets out beautifully and doesn't use an awful lot of resin and it looks really neat. So as usual, I'm doing lots of rolling. Rolling is relatively important, especially on the bottom skin. And the peel ply here is a silicone coated nylon. Silicone coated nylon peel ply made by AirTech. It has a finer weave than the uncoated so general purpose nylon peel ply. Sometimes has the red stripes that I've used in a lot of other samples. Here's the peel ply, and this is some P90 perforated release film. It has smaller holes slightly further apart than the standard P3, so I'm trying not to bleed much resin, and some thin breather, and a little pad off to the side for the vacuum fitting. I'm going to wipe it with acetone just around the edges to make sure there's no resin or release on the perimeter where the tacky tape is going to go down. And if you've watched any of these before, you've seen me make a lot of vacuum bags. This one has the sealant tape on the bag and there's plenty of room for pleats. And I'm just going to suck it down here. And on this one, I'm only going to use about half vacuum. Um, this is about 15 inches of mercury, 500 millibar or so. I'm going to work this sealant tape down. I had this bag folded up before I used it, and so there are little spots where the sealant tape is not as thick where it was folded over, and so it's a pain to chase those down. I'm 
As I let it cure, there's decent bleed, not too much. And of course the resin can't come up from the bottom, so I'm only bleeding out the top skin. Peeling it off here, it's going to pop off really nicely. This is uh, Kemley's Zyvax water-based release. And we can see the bottom, taking a quick look at it, you can see a lot of trapped air. There are areas around the perimeter that look pretty good, but in the middle there are a few zones where you can see it just wasn't compacted. There was nowhere for the air to go. And here's a hollow spot where there's a void, probably about 50 millimeters in diameter. You can press it, feel how there's some loft there. Looking back at number 18, the same core but with the holes, you can see just how nice it is and how nice it would have been if I'd perforated it. Here's the peel ply. This is a finer weave pulls off really easily and leaves a nice textured surface for secondary bonding. You can see a little bit of air in at the corners there but that's really not a bad deal. And the weight came in about 129 grams, four and a half ounces per square foot. And about 3.65 millimeters thick. And here's the panel just to look at it. You can see the air in that surface and there really was nowhere for it to go. And there's quite a bit of excess resin in this bottom skin because it couldn't bleed anywhere. And around the perimeter of the panel where the resin could bleed out to the, the periphery there was much nicer surface. And it's pretty stiff compared to number 18 with the e-glass that we're using to compare the one that had the holes, it's um, it's way stiffer, but you'd expect that because it's carbon. And breaking a little piece, see it fails the bottom skin and compression, and it fails right along the weave where there's that little bit of crimp uh, and the fibers are not straight. It's a pretty neat material. And this is a nice light panel, could be used for a lot of things, provided you punch some holes in the foam and let that resonant air out of the bottom skin. Thanks for checking it out.